All right, so we've got these giant circular ruins found both in South Africa and in Jordan. Both uh, cover at least 150 square kilometers in the area. And on the left, you can see the uh, South African ruins. It covers uh, the area between Carolina, Waterfall, Machacho Dorp, and Butplas. And the area on the right covers the uh, Azraq Oasis near Jordan, to the east of Jordan. And both are located, well, primarily alongside rivers and such, but I will show you that in the oncoming few minutes. So to start off, I will just show you the, the uh, ruins found in South Africa. They're located near Swaziland, as you can see. And I will just try to show you the most, well, the most pretty ones, just be like that. Um, as you can see, there's some over here, and they're scattered all over the area, really, which is pretty strange if you ask me, because it, it pretty much indicates there's some kind of intelligence behind them, and they're not some kind of weird natural occurrence. As you can see, there's some here. So these might not be the best examples, so I'll just move on. There's plenty to go around anyway. But yeah, most of these are circular, they're mostly located near water, or at least places where it's evident that, it, that there was water at some point. Small circle right here. Well, small, it's, let's just compare it with this, about 50 meters across, which is quite big. And um, the South African ones have been studied by Professor Michael Tellinger who pretty much came to the conclusion, although not everyone might agree with that, that these are about 50,000 years old, which, well, would make them the oldest ones found on Earth, if not some of the oldest. And um, some of them are, well, some of them are standalone, but not all of them are, which indicates to me that we're talking about some kind of settlements, or at least, well, villages, really. Which is weird, because, well, if they're 50,000 years old, who the hell lived there, right? So, let's just move on. There's some more here. I'll kind of just brush through them, because you can find them all on the, uh, on the, in the article, which I will put in the description. So you can just take a look at them yourself. But, yeah. Um, if they're villages, the main question is who lived there, and this is a great example of multiple of them next to each other, and because of their sheer size, if you just stand right next to them on ground level, you apparently cannot see them for yourself, because I haven't been there, so I can't really, it's pure speculation on my part here, but apparently they're so big and so ruined that you cannot clearly see them when you're standing there on ground level, so you really have to view them from the air. Which, well, if you look at this, it's evident that there was some kind of intelligence behind the creation of these circles. So yeah, moving on. Zooming out here for a bit. Come on, work with me here. It's this entire area, and I will show you one more from the South African ruins. Come on, work with me here. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but hopefully you will be able to. These ruins are pretty big, and it's an incredible area. And I have, I have looked all over the Earth on Google Maps, and the only other place I have been able to find these were all the way over here in Jordan which is quite strange if you ask me because there was an article referring to them as the uh, as being similar to the Nazca lines which I have to disagree with because if you zoom in here it becomes rather obvious they're pretty much identical to the ones in South Africa and again I will post these coordinates as well as the uh, South African ones in the uh, description yeah, these ones are at least 50 meters across as well. I'm going to have to do it like this, because Google Maps has it stuck on the left. But yeah, and 
And the uh, the ones in the Asterisk Oasis are clearly, or at least more so than the South African ones, located alongside rivers that are now dried up. So the main question here is, when did these rivers dry up? Because if I lived there and those rivers dried up, it would be pretty much, you know, it would be pretty clear to move along and find a new place to live at. And they're found all over the place here. There's some more, although these aren't necessarily as circular as the ones in, um, in South Africa. They do have the same circular ones scattered in between them. So I'll try to locate them right now. Because it would obviously make a better point from... Yeah, here we go. As you can see, these ones are, well, not perfectly, but they get pretty damn close to being perfect. So, yeah. Here you go. And I will just show you some more. Uh, these ones are located alongside a river. As you can clearly see. Again, it's mostly speculation on my part but they do look very similar and for some reason nobody has been able to answer me on how that would be possible because well mainstream archaeology really doesn't i don't know it seems like they're afraid or something to talk about this stuff because it kind of goes you know against mainstream archaeology and here's some more examples so i will show you these as well and these are clear examples that there are multiple ruins next to each other, meaning some kind of village or settlement of sorts. And although these aren't necessarily circular, these ones are. And I'll show you some pictures later, which pretty much prove that they're not just some weird stone formations on the ground due to some natural occurrence. Because then that would mean they would have to be able to, you know, be located in more places than just the Asrak Oasis and the ones in South Africa. They would have to be found in more locations. And, well, I haven't been able to find any yet. So yeah, there you go. I'll just show the, uh, the distance in between both locations. Because it's about like 7,000 kilometers apart. Right, so up north we've got Jordan, down south we've got South Africa. And the reason I even came across the uh, circles in Jordan was because of this article written by LifeScience.com um, which stated that they look the same as the Nazca lines, which are located in all the way over in Peru. And I have studied them before, and with studying I mean, yeah, I've just looked at the images, and it was pretty obvious to me that they do not look similar to the ones, to the, uh, the geoglyphs in Jordan. And the reason because I'm saying that is, well, you know, you can just compare them yourself. These are the Nazca lines, which are pretty much just giant geoglyphs depicting animals and such. And the circles in Jordan, they don't look like animals. They pretty much look the exact same as the ones found in South Africa. So my question here is, how did that happen? Like, how did two civilizations make perfectly identical building structures, whatever you want to call them, and how come nobody has found this connection before? And, right, I think I'm running out of time right now for the movie, but you can read all about this on the article, which you can click on right now, I hope, and just read more about that. And I hope you guys will come with some decent feedback, because I'm seriously wondering how this could happen.